<laughs> right. All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jana Saylor, and if I haven't met you yet, I am the artistic director and founder of the Allegra Chamber Orchestra, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Uh, I'm delighted to be coming to you from the traditional and unceded territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, which is uh, the Siksika, Kainai, Pekane, and Tsutsina nations, uh, as well as the Nakoda nations and the Métis uh, Region 3, which is uh, currently known as Al Calgary, Alberta, where it's finally feeling like spring and uh, <laughs> for a change. And um, I am privileged to uh, work, live and, and create here. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to point out um, and introduce uh, some of our, our wonderful mentors and mentees. So this is part of Allegra's uh, Composer Incubator Project, which is a three month um, mentor mentoring project where um, emerging composers are connected with established Canadian composers and uh, they've been working away behind the scenes to create some uh, beautiful pieces for the Allegra Chamber Orchestra, which will be live streamed in June as part of our festival. Um, ev online event. And so I just like if you if you have your um, camera on, you can just give a wave. Uh, we have Mary Alice Conrad and Holly Winter. We have Athena Palas Laredo, Ashley Seward and Sasha Ko. And uh, we're missing we're missing one. Uh, Maria isn't able to attend live today, um, but uh, we're so glad to see all of you. And we also have one of our esteemed mentors, Rodney Sharman, on the call as well today. So welcome, Rodney. Uh, we um, also, of course, are so thrilled to have our um, community members joining us. This is uh, part of our mandate to um, share, grow, and learn from one another. So welcome. And uh, this, this program would not be possible without the generous support of the BC Arts Council and the Vancouver Cultural Services. So we see these workshops as a valuable tool as part of um, a professional development, not only of our mentees, but um, as our community members. And uh, we hope you'll use this, uh, these opportunities to, um, to grow um, professionally alongside uh, with your, your art form. So today we have two uh, wonderful guests from from the Canadian Music Centre. We have uh, Sean Bickerton, who is the director of the BC uh, chapter of the Canadian Music Centre. Among other things, he's a, um, a wonderfully accomplished violinist and um, has produced uh, and, and worked for and represented uh, a, a, just a, a, an amazing array of artists from various genres. And uh, is closely um, uh, involved with the cultural uh, life of uh, Vancouver. And we're so privileged to have him and benefit from him, his work at the Canadian Music Center. And um, I will um, give it over to Sean and, um, uh, and our wonderful colleague, Jordan Nobles, who's a Juno award-winning composer as well. He works alongside Sean at the CMC. And uh, without further ado, uh, welcome and thank you so much. Thanks, Jenna. Um, really pleased to meet you. Um, it's really exciting to see people pursuing composition. And um, composers are a weird and wonderful bunch and have these miraculous minds that imagine that which doesn't exist. And it's always fascinating because every composer creates their own world, their own universe. And it's so interesting to see what evolves from each individual take on creating and, and solving the challenges that you do. As Jana said, my name's Sean Bickard and I'm the BC director of the Canadian Music Center. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here with you with my esteemed colleague, Jordan Nobles, who, um, is an extraordinary composer uh, and we're really lucky to have him as the librarian in residence and the in residence at the Canadian Music Centre here in, in BC. I'm talking to you from our Canadian Music Centre downtown Vancouver at 837 Davie Street. Um, and as you can see behind me, I have the shelves of our library behind. Um, we have about 24,000 scores in that library and Jordan will tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, I'm talking to you 
from the uh, traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and um, uh, uh, sorry, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and oh dear God, Squamish First Nations. Thank you. I did that in the wrong order, and it didn't trip off my tongue the way it usually does, so I tripped myself. Um, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. And um, uh, what else can I say? I think that's enough of an introduction. Um, but we live, Jordan and I live, and our colleague Heather, um, who is our admin, we live to champion composers and their music and to bring it to life and to celebrate the amazing work they do in this, in this country and in the world, and particularly for me here in BC. Um, we do that a number of ways, and um, I'm, if I can, we'll see if this will work. I'm going to try and share a presentation with you. Uh, One moment, I'll screen. just Let's I'll see. make that possible oh. for you. Okay. There you go. You should be able to. Thank you, now. Jana. Yeah, no problem. Uh, okay. Is that working? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, and then. Yes, Perfect. terrific. So this is the subject I'm worst at, which involves technology. So let's, we'll have fun exploring my ability to destroy most systems. Let's see if we can uh, okay. No. So my remote control is not going to work, but that's all right. So the Canadian Music Centre was founded uh, about 60 years ago in Toronto. And I have to say that our DNA, the, the origins of the organization, were very much um, uh, a patriarchal white um, uh, organization. It was a group of uh, men, uh, male composers, that wanted to preserve their own legacy. And they also, they did some great things, but they also very much were focused on keeping people out. So there to, to have this kind of exclusive club that only they could belong to and they could decide who could be part of it. We've come a long way since then, um, but I, I just want to acknowledge that history because it, it very much informs our uh, intense desire today to do better and to create, uh, uh, to be more reflective of, of a different society. and to create a, a, a world that celebrates the extraordinary variety of creativity that can only be found in an extraordinary variety of people uh, doing that creativity. So here in BC, we, they formed a chapter here or a, a region as they call them here in BC 40 years ago. And um, it was an amazing group of people and there were composers like Jean Coulthard and Barbara Pentland involved. Um, and uh, some uh, people like John Washburn and others that got this going here in BC because they felt it was important to start championing what was going on, which was unique in the West Coast. And I think while it's today, we see a very rich environment, uh, a world that is just alive with creativity. BC in some ways is one of the most creative parts of the country musically um, and sets an extraordinary standard for performance internationally. It, at that time, it was it wasn't it wasn't recognized that work of 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 weight was being done here in the way that it is today, and that took a, a group of people spending time in in investing in 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 teaching in performing and bringing music to life and talking and in and in championing young composers and creating a new and unique voice in this province and we're very proud to be um, the uh, progenitors of that today and so we do a lot of things in a lot of different fields but primarily we can break down um, our focus uh, as the catalyst that tries to connect you to the world of Canadian musical creation. And we have three focuses, performance, education, and promotion. Um, and in, in the case of performance, we have concert series, we collaborate with other organizations, we make our space available for small 
ensembles for, uh, for individual creators. We are seeking to partner with people to make weird and unusual and wonderful things happen. So we like to think of ourselves as a creative resource. We provide educational programs, um, free programs to youth. We uh, have awards and scholarships. Uh, the Southern Prize, which is awarded to a woman composition student now every year, which was created on International Women's Day um, in the honor of Anne Southern uh, and funded by her cousin, uh, Louis or uh, Martha Lou Henley. Um, we have another uh, scholarship that is awarded the Pentland Prize each year to a um, to, uh, uh, grad student. And we've just created a new $500 scholarship called the Director's Prize or Director's Award that will be given each year as a discretionary award. Um, we also have an, a, a, an awards program. Um, and we, we encourage you to think about using our center once we reopen, hopefully over the summer and by the very last, at least by the fall. Um, we have this public lending library, which is an amazing resource, more than 24,000 scores. Some of the, every composer that you know by name at some point out in this part of the world has visited and spent hours and days going through scores, researching, studying the music of, of other composers, looking for, for works that might inspire them, and looking for works to program. Um, and um, then we have this salon that we created, the Maria Daskin Salon, to put these performances on a bit of a pedestal, to, to, to create an environment where audiences can, can uh, enjoy this music in a really intimate niche format, 44 seats. Um, and, uh, and then we have our boardroom, which we lend out and, uh, and to organizations, anybody doing anything to do with new music or Canadian music. And we have Murray Adaskin's piano in the salon, which has hence it got its name. It's a 1960 Heinzmann Salon Grand, hence the Murray Adaskin Salon. Uh, I love this quote by Charlie Barber, City Opera Vancouver. He says, symbolically, it means a lot to City Opera that our company meets in the home of Canadian music in Vancouver, which is how we like to think of ourselves, our role in this city and, and in this province. Um, we do, in addition to concerts and co-presentations co with other organizations, we've co-presented with the Academy, with UBC, with um, the with the Rennie uh, Art Museum, we've done programs at the Burnaby Youth Correction Center. We've done um, collaborations with Vancouver Chamber Choir, with Redshift Music, uh, with the Queer Arts Festival. We're constantly looking to work with other people and other organizations. Um, we do CD launches here, film screenings. We've got a beautiful AV setup, and now we have an amazing live stream. Um, capacity built into our salon that we um, would are looking for partners to come and do projects that involve live streaming, video and audio recording. We're spending really a fortune on upgrading that space to make it more soundproof. It's not a perfectly pristine recording space because of we're right on the street level, but I've always taken that as a kind of a strength rather than a weakness that that we are part of the city. We're an urban theater. We're not a recital theater set up, up on a hill, but we're right downtown on Davy Street. And, uh, and when people go by, uh, they interact with the performances that are going on through the windows at street level and that, and we, we love that. And we give talks. Uh, we recently, I, uh, how many of you know um, or know of Dylan Robinson? Okay. So Dylan is just this a phenomenon. Um, he's kind of taken the country by storm. Um, he's written this work called Hungry Listening. And one of the things I found most fascinating about that work is that Dylan said that the traditional word for settler in the Stolo language, which is in the Fraser Valley uh, territory, uh, is hungry people. Settlers were hungry people because they came out of the woods and the bush starving and they had to be fed. And one showed up, then two, and he said, soon there were hundreds and then thousands. This was during the gold rush. 
and uh, they they were struggling to feed these people and teach them how to feed themselves. We were the hungry people. We were the starving that they fed. That was the relationship. So he wrote this book called Hungry Listening. I encourage you to read it. It 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 completely turns our idea of Canadian music and composition on its head, um, particularly this history of appropriation, cultural appropriation, misuse. Um, and these are issues that the Canadian Music Centre is vitally involved in because we are, we have about at least 200 scores in our shelves that have been um, segregated because they're problematic and we're, we are working with Indigenous leaders to understand how we need to treat these historical works and what needs to be done either to place them in context or to overcome weaknesses in, in the way that they were developed at the time or simply to pull them out of circulation. And that's an ongoing process that we're, we're involved in at the moment. Um, I mentioned our scores, our library. We have, um, we do all kinds of inquiries and consultations. If you ever have a question, Jordan is an amazing resource. All you have to do is call and you can speak to one of the most the, you know, one of the most extraordinary experts on Canadian repertoire in the country um, and someone who just loves composers like this. Uh, Jordan lives, his whole life is devoted to musicians that bring new music to life and other composers. And he does everything he can to help uh, everyone else in, in his world. Does a lot of that through Redshift, for, but a great deal. Uh, through us. We also have professional placements that come to the library. Um, why does music matter? Because it's a more potent music instrument for, it's a more potent instrument for education than any other because rhythm and harmony find their way into the most inward places of the soul. I love that quote uh, from Plato. Uh, he recognized immediately that music preceded, our music center in the brain, they say, preceded the speech center in the brain. There are six parts to it, and it evolved at a time, I imagine, when people were trying to express themselves viscerally uh, through vocalizing before there were words, before we had uh, you know, verbal communication, maybe sign language, I don't know. But there's the reason that music is so powerful is because that developed first, and it bypasses this prefrontal cortex and speaks directly to some part of us that, that isn't rational, um, that touches us very deeply. This was our last concert season, season four, before we got shut down. Um, and we did some really cool things. Ross Alden was a queer composer who was just vilified in, in England and had to leave the country. Uh, maybe there was a bit of a scandal, I suspect, and he came here to Vancouver, but he was a prolific composer, hundreds of works, um, symphonies, uh, he wrote operas, he, he was just a prolific composer, and um, ended up teaching music here in Vancouver, because of his sexual identity and, and being hounded out of public life. Um, and normally, we produce about six to eight concerts under our own banner each year, CMCBC concerts. And then in addition, there's all these collaborations, as I mentioned. Uh, some of the compo education programs Rodney has taught for us, Composer in the Classroom, done a brilliant job at Killarney School and even on um, Salt Spring Island. Um, so we, try, we, we make these programs available all over the province, Prince, Prince George, uh, Victoria, the Gulf Islands, here in Vancouver, um, this year we're doing a Wise Garber workshop with 10 youth free of three, free, um, uh, to everybody involved with, do you all know Pep, uh, the piano air who project of Corey Ham and Nicole Geely? Are you familiar with them? They've got something like 90 works commissioned now, um, that they've commissioned for that instrumental, co uh, combination. And they are working, um, they've worked with Edward Topp as a composer mentor and 10 young people to write 10 new works for that ensemble over the uh, summer, uh, summer months, early fall. And this was a workshop more than a reading. 
so that we didn't expect them to have ideas developed before they began. And we'll start releasing videos of those when, Jordan, would you say? Yeah, I can't hear you. After May, probably yeah. mid-May, late May, we'll start releasing them. Yeah, so we'll have 10 videos uh, in addition. And then the other thing we started doing when our concerts, uh, I'll jump back, when our concerts shut down, when, when the very day that we shut down, the prime minister said we we're closing the country down March 16, Jordan and I spoke by phone. And within that day, we had come up with the unaccompanied. Um, uh, and Jordan, will you talk about those? Okay, so we came up with the unaccompanied program. We've made something like we'll make 50 of those by the end of the year. Jordan will tell you about them. We're really proud of that. We feel like we've done a lot since shutdown in post COVID as a small organization and very small team, but trying to keep musicians employed, trying to keep um, uh, bringing Canadian music to life. Uh, as best we can uh, in challenging and uh, circumstances. And Jordan has been a, just an amazing partner uh, to make all of that happen. I mentioned awards. We give awards all over the province, awards of excellence uh, for contributions to Canadian music, Lifetime Achievement Award every year. Uh, another person is, is uh, uh, elevated, if you will, or, or recognized for their lifetime achievement and, and their, their create their uh, contribution to Canadian music. We do uh, for young people at lots of competitions around the province, we give outstanding performances of a Canadian work. And um, also at composition competitions, we give awards for outstanding composition. So what we're trying to do with these, we can't do everything, we're small, um, we're just two and a half people, but what we try and do is recognize what everyone else is doing and to, to celebrate that and bring attention to it and bring publicity to it. Um, so here's one um, with Owen Underhill, who doesn't look terribly happy right there, but he was very happy uh, getting this award. That's such an Owen picture. Uh, uh, that was uh, for Turning Point and for Owen as a, as a founder. Uh, there I am uh, talking to Gloria Makarenko about uh, some of the composer uh, documentaries we've produced celebrating some of the legacy composers. That's Gene Colthard uh, up on the screen there, who Rodney is an, uh, an avid champion for. Uh, there is Rodney on the screen next to me. We're presenting an award there. That's a Lifetime Achievement Award to Bramwell Tovey uh, for his contribution to Canadian music on stage at the Orpheum in front of about 26 or 700 people that night. That was kind of cool. Um, uh, we have a website, musiccenterbc.ca. Uh, we're on Twitter and Facebook as well. So I'll stop sharing so you don't have to look at my terribly messy, cluttered, disorganized, lunatic desktop. Um, and you can look at crazy, uncluttered, lunatic me instead. Uh, so I'm sure there's a million things I haven't said, but I feel like I've lathered on a long time. Um, could I just ask each of you, uh, maybe just to say if you, I, I, two things. Do you have a connection to the Canadian Music Centre of any kind, a memory or an association or some thought about it? Like any, any point of reference where it's, uh, touched your life in any way, like I borrowed a score or something that helped me pass an exam. Um, uh, or, or, and rather, um, do you have a question? So those two things. So anything that you have know about the CMC or some point of connection, and do you have a question? And so um, I will go in order of who I can see. So Mary Alice, maybe I'll start with you. Sure, thank you. So I'm kind of um, embracing composition later in life, but um, earlier on I, I did a lot of studio teaching for piano. Mm -hmm. And so I've accessed a lot of the scores through the CMC and um, engaged my students in the process, which has been really mm -hmm. exciting to kind of discover composers that are sometimes closer to us than we think. Um, and mm -hmm. just to learn a little bit about them and see how they're presented and platformed. Um, 
through the CMC, which I think is great. Um, I also participated in a, a choral mentorship um, composer program last year that was um, sponsored in partnership with the CMC. So that was a really great program that I'm grateful for, a great experience. Mm. Oh, terrific. Uh, yeah, I don't have any uh, questions right now, um, but yeah, those are some of my experiences. And yeah, I'm grateful, grateful for the support of the CMC. Mm, thank you. I think that's because my presentation was so brilliant. Really, probably there's are no questions. How could there be? But thank you, Mary Alice. That, that was terrific. Uh, Holly, what about yourself? Um, yeah, so, sort of similar to Mary Alice. I uh, don't have a lot of relationship with uh, the West Coast CMC because I am, although I'm going to school in Vancouver, I'm physically in Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't have like a, a brick and mortar CMC, but the, the CMC website is one of the first places I go to when I'm like looking for uh inspiration um i really like that i can search for so many parameters if i'm like i really want to explore a lot of new harp work i can look at that and i've, I've gone there uh, researching for this piece that we're writing right now so i really appreciate that as a tool it's one of the tools to gather inspiration um and you know you have a huge library of perusal scores online which is super helpful as a composer just looking to sort of how did they notate that? I'm really curious. So yes, uh, right. <laughs> um, yeah, and as of now, no burning questions, but I'm sure that'll change. Again, after that presentation, but yes, thank you so much. Uh, Palace? Um, I don't have any questions, um, but I remember uh, it wasn't last year, it was 2019, uh, Sasha and I went to a concert. It was like a VR showing of um, oh yeah, of this piece. And like, it was the first time like I went to the location and it like is literally is like, you know, in the center of the city. I, there's like a Nando's across the street. Was, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but yeah, that's my most distinct memory of the CMC. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a, a co-presentation. Jordan, who was that with? I can't remember. That was with Chroma. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. So they had this uh, virtual reality thing. Thank you. That's a great memory. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, it's interesting for me to know uh, that that there is some relevance, and and, and that's so key. Is to be uh, for any arts organizations to be relevant to your place and time. So I, I really appreciate hearing these. Ashley. Yeah, um, I, I'm much in the, in the same boat as Holly, where um, I definitely often find myself going to the CMC website to um, just just to look at pieces. You know, there's a lot of lot of great pieces I've I've discovered and been able to study just because the um, probably probably one of the one of the if not the most accessible libraries of, of contemporary classical music um resides on the cmc website and so yeah, that's that's just so i've uh, been so awesome um in my short career and uh yeah i'm i'm also doing a school project right now using a score i got from the cmc prairie regions uh like throwaway pile oh yeah they were Oh, terrific. Okay, thank you very much. That's that's wonderful, Chris. Oh, hi. Um, hi. Well, I I um I was a part of the um, Gene Cothard String Quartet. Oh God, right. Yeah, and so uh, there was that, and I have used the library as well. Oh, fantastic! So, yeah. Um, Which uh, what you, who was the who was the uh, composer mentor, Chris, for that that year you were there? Uh, Jennifer Butler. Jennifer. Oh, she was the she was terrific. Yeah, she was yeah. really excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. That oh, was great. the that was the performance in the museum. Oh, in the, the maritime gallery. in the maritime no, no, museum. No, 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 no. The, uh, no. Sorry, not museum. Uh, at the, at the art gallery. gallery. Yeah. Oh, yeah, at, the the Rennie, Rennie. at the Rennie Museum, at yeah. the Rennie Art Gallery. That's yeah, great. right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, we've been all over yeah. the city. Oh, that's great. Uh, really nice to see you again. And, and thank yeah, you. Yeah, good to see you. 
Okay. And Sasha. Yeah. Um, I think my I was going to basically say the same thing as Palace said about going for the VR show, but actually um, mm -hmm. I had recently immigrated to Canada for school. So I didn't actually know about the CMC mm -hmm. <laughs> until coming to UBC. And um, another memory that I have is actually the staff paper. Dr. Chapman, like Stephen Chapman was like, mm -hmm. I get staff paper from the CMC and he oh. gave me a bunch. So <laughs> that's another memory that I have. Um, I don't really have any burning questions for now though. Okay, thank you. That's funny. We used to give out staff paper, a manuscript paper. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, do we still do that, Trent? No, but with that used to be a thing. Composers would come to get their manuscript paper to write to compose, that's really funny. Okay, well, listen, Thank you. And Rodney, you, our lives are completely intertwined. It's like, a, it's, it's a marriage more than it is. Uh, I was going to say it's a marriage more than a romance, but maybe it's both. Um, <laughs> and your beard is, is sort of a guest of honor here. So I, I, I think really uh, the, your, uh, the lives are of the CMC and Rodney are completely intertwined, inseparable uh, almost, um, although certainly distinguishable. So uh, and I, I really appreciate you sharing those memories um, and or those just little insights because all right there you have an amazing variety of points of connection here and it's very nice just to hear that. Thank you. Um, I, Jordan, I think uh, it'd be great if you could um, talk about something useful and real and more interesting that I've done. That would be terrific. Uh, that would be that would be hard. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to share. Hi, I'm Jordan. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and take you through the Google Doc that I just sent you, um, the one that's in the chat. And uh, it's one you can bookmark. I'll be adding stuff to it over the course of more time uh, whenever I think of something cool to add to it. But it's basically a, a breakdown of what you can get from the CMC BC and the CMC Canada. So I'm gonna attempt to share my screen right now uh, with sound and uh, see how that goes. Google Chrome, I'm doing it. Here it happens, I push the button. In theory, you can see what I see. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is uh, basically just the Google Doc and I've got a whole bunch of links on the left side for CMC BC, which is its own thing, but it's connected to CMC Canada, which is uh, on this side, and this is the library and another a bunch of other services. Um, and yeah, so these are just links. So uh, the first thing uh, on under services is uh, we have the print and bind service. So instead of um, selling you a manuscript, we actually can print and bind professionally uh, scores that you might do, and you want to submit them to an orchestra or a choir or something. Um, it's a it's a pretty good service, and if you click on this, it goes on and tells you all about it. In theory, yeah. So um, different size of pages and all that stuff. It's a it's a really cool thing, and I like it a lot. And that's where. Uh, I and I, I should say, Jordan does that himself, and nobody cares more about page turns. He's relentless about page turns. Yeah. And, right. If you, if your page turns are bad, I will send the score back to you. Yeah. And say, don't or part back to you and say yeah, don't do part here. And Unless it's like just, he takes so much care with each one. He's he's just religious about the quality of these. So it's done with love. Every one of these. I like. I just like be you know fastidious and annoying about <laughs> it. Um, anyway, because I really like notation and printing and all that. Anyway, so. The print and bind service is a thing that we do and we're pretty good at it. And if you take your stuff to Staples, they don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, but uh, we do. Uh, another thing is that we actually do rent out the salon that, uh, but not so much right now because no one's doing concerts right now, but you could still rehearse there or uh, do a concert in there if you want to. And, uh, and how stuff. much is it an hour during the day? It's like ten bucks. Yeah, ten dollars an hour with the piano. That's amazing. So we're the we we have purposely subsidized our space. It's the least expensive in the city on purpose. We try to subsidize it. And if you have an idea for a project that we can collaborate with you on, then yeah. then we get into another uh, discussion if it, entirely. If it 
involves Canadian composers yeah. of any sort, uh, then we're happy to be uh, sort of involved in it at some mm -hmm. level. Uh, another thing we have, and you might like this, it's a little bit COVID dependent, but right, we also have an artist in residence program. And that is like, we're actually give the salon space from nine to five, uh, Monday to Wednesday, Monday to Friday, um, when we're not renting it, which is often, uh, to a composer or a performer who wants to work in the space and use the resources of the CMC building. Uh, so this link actually just takes you down here where it explains the whole um, situation and people uh, for free of, free of charge can be the artist in residence at the CMC and use the salon uh, to for a month. focus. Yeah, for a month to focus on your project or less if you only have a two week window. We can. I thought they were required them. to stay in there for one month. You're not allowed to leave. Yeah, we can't give you a key. Right. Uh, so insurance purposes, you have must to stay for a month. Bring a sleeping bag. No. Uh, and a pillow. No. Um, we are actually in the process of. Uh, we're on Davy Street, and it's loud. We're on the process. We're in the process of proof, proofing, soundproofing, soundproofing the whole area. So I've been recording stuff there for the last year, and you can. You can record stuff if you just wait for the siren to go by. Um, but uh, pretty soon, I think within the next couple of uh, weeks, we'll have it as soundproofed as we can. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's something to, to this artist in residence program is something to consider when you've got a big project and you want to get out of your house um, after COVID. Um, another thing we do is we do the newsletter. And the newsletter is an up-to-date list of concerts, competitions, and various things. It is and, the go-to listing yeah. of new music in the province of BC. <laughs> Never mind. I'll, I'll do that later. Um, so uh, down here is like sort of the archive of older uh, things, but you should just really sign up here. Sign up to receive Set of Pulse in your inbox. We do it every two weeks, and we include stuff that we've done, but also like important announcements from the new music world and and, and opportunities, uh, Jordan, opportunities. right? Opportunities. I'm going to show them a sample. Okay. For instance, here's yesterday's. Um, there's me. You just wanted to do that because it I, has your picture. It has my picture on it, yeah. yeah. Um, and so here's a couple of news. Rupert Lang won a big thing. Christopher Nichols CD came out. Uh, here's an unaccompanied video that we made this week, actually yesterday. Um, and then upcoming events, uh, interesting uh, things. Usually this is a lot longer. It's been a weird little week. Um, so there's like three concerts that are coming up uh, that might be interesting to see. Um, our new thing, score videos, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so we're including score videos now. I want a score video of Rodney to make a score video for Rodney. Yeah. Um, although he does them. He's one of the people that actually does them already, but I still want to do one. Um, and then there's, uh, lately we're just doing, uh, because of COVID, we've been, people have been making a lot of content. So we... When we find stuff, we throw it on here. Uh, videos and, and uh, various concerts that people have put up on the internet. So we link to it all. Podcasts and stuff. Here's a link to uh, the, the CMC library directly. And composer opportunities. And this is something you could like, uh, would like a lot. Uh, half of these are <laughs> were due yesterday. Um, but every time we find a composer opportunity for Canadian composers, um, we, throw it, we throw it in here. For instance, Redshift's recent call for scores for their glass instruments. What an incredible people these are. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, this is usually a little bit bigger, this newsletter, because there's just not a lot of upcoming events this week. But um, it's a great place to go to learn about what's going on in the community. And we have an orca. So. And we have an orca in yeah. our on our logo. Yeah, which uh, for some reason I dropped a about bit like last a night. Corpus, really, the shape is wrong. It's a bit, it's the, a bit short. The head's a bit rounded, sort of. Yeah, I didn't. You know, didn't it looks uh, like more like a porpoise. Who made that logo? Didn't um, you guys? No, nothing to do with us. I, you know, oh. I, you know, if we did it, it would have a perfect shape. Yes. Well, would. no, if we did it, it would have an otter. Because I would. <laughs> that's true. It would be an otter. That's true. Okay, sorry, we digress. Yeah. Just want you to know that we like others. <laughs> um, so the unaccompanied videos, we're making 50 of them and we've done 
we've done a lot. Anyway, you can, it's a partnership. Can, yes. Again, with those Redshift people, they're amazing. Between CMC, BC, and Redshift Music Society, which Jordan also runs, and he also runs the Redshift Music label. He just, he won't stop because he loves helping champions. There's, there's, yeah, I get tired. Can you show one? I'm going to show an unaccompanied video. Oh, I, and I'm going to put Rodney on the spot and show his. Yay. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not going right. to show the whole thing because I don't even know if you can hear me. Anyway, that's the newest one. Just Glory. show a minute or something would be and great. It, and so you could go through and like, look at all. They're all recorded. They're all, these are all because we started, because we had concerts that we were doing, but we couldn't do them anymore. This was a way for us to continue to pay performers uh, for a gig, even though there's no concert. So um, like for instance, here is uh, Six of Dudes for Celtic Harp by Roddy Sherman. And I'll, I'll show you one minute of it. I don't know if you can hear it. I pushed the button, but who knows? Anyway. A bit quiet. Turned up my screen to, I'll shut up, I'll shut up, that's what I'll do. I don't think we can hear it. You can't hear it? It's very quiet. All right, well, never mind. But yeah. each of these is a, is a kind of a pay on to the composer. The musician chooses the work to perform and Jordan films these so beautifully in our salon, just using an iPhone. Yeah, they are, they're very, we have very simple lighting, um, but they're all beautifully done and reverential to the composer and to the work. And um, if you have a moment, go to our video channel at musiccenterbc.ca and check out some of those because they're just, they're little gems, each one, about how long, Jordan, roughly are just they? click this link. I think the yeah. longest one is 13 minutes and the shortest yeah. is about three. Yeah, so three to three to 12, 13 minutes. They're, they're beautiful uh, vignettes uh, and such a variety of instruments, performers and, and composers. It's, it's quite breathtaking. And it's there'll fun. be 50 by the end of the year, right? And then we'll stop. Then we will stop. Yeah. Never make another one. Never now, again. I, I recorded most of them on my phone because my phone was good, but now I've got a fancy computer so i can't claim to be recording them on my phone anymore okay fine they're now they're good now they're really good. Um, uh all right and also we just started making score videos which mm -hmm. is uh something i like a lot so um this is good for study and research uh, as well as just for like taking a look at the score you want to know what that person's music uh how they wrote it or whatever um then this is a, a resource we're going to have billions of these we're going to make millions and millions of these and we're always looking for volunteers to help us make them i found an easy way to do it and uh yeah we like it okay for instance uh here's anna husband's uh let's try that again did anybody oh i have to push button all right so this is harbor by anna husband um this was this piece was recently nominated uh for classical composition of the year uh in the juno juno awards so you can listen to it. Can you think. maximize? Yeah. I can. Can you hear it? No. I can. So, so weird. I, I Zoom is so maddening. Jordan, um, you have to share sound. I did. How do you, you do, do that, Rodney? Uh, you'd have to give me control. <laughs> no, God, don't no. do that. Uh, no, 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 no. We don't want to. We know, we know better. No, we, um, no, no I you remember what happened the last time. I don't, um, but uh, nevertheless, you hear the music as it goes by. Yeah. So like, you, as, the, as the piece goes by, you get to watch, you get to and see it's this. Animated, score. it's really, it's, it's, they're very well done. They're fun to yeah. make. Um, anyway, so that's that. So that's here, you get a link to all of them there. There'll be like two or three a week new ones up there um, because I want to do a hundred of them within a year. So it's going to be fun. And then Sean should talk about this. These are great documentaries. Yeah. Uh, so we worked with an, um, an award-winning um, uh, film uh, maker named John Bolton, and we created five um, uh, documentary films about five legacy composers that uh, they weren't exactly the first generation, but as close as we could get to the hallmark composers of the very first generation of composers to write concert music on the West Coast of Canada. Now, 
in retrospect now, understanding what I do five years later, um, there's a, you know, there's a whole context to that conversation about, you know, settlers coming and writing music here when music had been performed and created for thousands of years. So I, uh, I leaving aside that discussion, acknowledging it, but leaving that aside, we, we wanted to acknowledge that generation that did something really extraordinary, which was write this music here when nobody would take, you know, if you weren't writing in London or Paris, if you're writing in Toronto already, you were suspect, but from Vancouver or the island or the interior of BC, who would take that seriously in the, in the, in the day? But they were doing that. And what I love is that um, Her uh, Murray Daskin's brother, Harry, was the, the founder of the music department at UBC. And his first two hires were two women composers um, and Barbara Pentland and uh, Jean Coulthard. And it's extraordinary when you think about the time when women were so discouraged from composing and, and weren't in positions, academic positions of power. So these two women to me are just powerful um, icons of, of a new generation and something really remarkable happening here. And, and they had such courage and conviction uh, and Barbara, especially, you know, just threw off all convention, created her own kind of um, language, uh, minimalistic language, uh, avant-garde language, um, serial language, really. Um, and and Jean, who who was writing very much uh, uh, grounded in 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 the, the the time and the place she was in, grounded in the aesthetic of the of the beauty of the place. Um, and the, the, the documentary about Jean Coulthard talks about is, is focused on um, the Pines of Emily Carr, which is just a stunning work. So beautiful and evocative. Anyway, those, those films, they're, they're arranged in eight to 12 minutes. The one about Rudolf Komarov is hysterically funny. Uh, he is so quirky and weird and wonderful. They, they're worth looking if you ever have time, and they're definitely subjects for uh, for research. Uh, uh, Jordan, could you just click on the uh, digital archive for two seconds? And let's do a search for Rodney while we have it. Yeah, let's, let's a, just, let's just make it. Okay, so this is digital uh, archive, uh, which is uh, 24 biographies, programs, letters, interviews, like a whole bunch of material, the history the, of what we It's the history of new music in BC. Uh, and and anything our composers have done outside of BC, and uh, so just uh, type try in. Rodney's we're going to type. We're going to try and embarrass Rodney here. Yeah, definitely, because there's there'll be so many embarrassable things. Yeah, we got to find yeah. something. Okay, Rodney, and then submit my yeah. search. This and is so unique in the country. No other region has the, has done this. The we ability have two to volunteers embarrass. who have worked for a decade. So there's pages and pages of this. There's 924 um, uh, pieces, documents. There's, um, there's links Ditto. to videos, to performances. There's reviews, there's Let's photographs. Here, and this is a copy oh, of a program from 19 something something. It doesn't look too old, uh, which for some reason has that highlighted and scribbled all over it, but um, this is a, uh, program that had Rodney. Uh, yeah, it's Rodney right there. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's just like if you're doing research on a composer, you can get uh, possibly hundreds of there's 924 <laughs> items about Rodney Sharman. You see, we love this. you, Rodney. Very sweet. <laughs> now, uh, uh, before we get too far away from you, um, what you were talking about with these films, yep. all the composers, I would especially encourage you to look at Rudolf Komarov's um, uh, video because of what you can learn about notation. Yes. This oh, is brilliant. A, yeah. This is a, a score. I was actually at the premiere and Owen Underhill was one of the people playing the premiere. But uh, the notation of this just demonstrates how well, how one can bridge the gap between one's imagination and one's technique. Mm. And that that is not always done in a conventional manner. Yeah, because each of these 13 preludes is done in a completely different style of notation. 
so he uses so it's just fascinating and and the way john did this was animating the notation so that it's really clear each p each piece as it's performed uh it, it's a, it's thanks rodney because that's that's my favorite one i just love it, it it's he's so it's like uh it's just a, a brilliant uh fun film okay we're coming up on too much time here okay. um i should else? show i should show people how to use the library if they have it because we got a new okay. library website so the national library is where the all the scores that you might want to loan or just look at a pdf online or uh purchase even or um, rent or, or rent. Um, if it's a large ensemble, you might want to just rent the parts. Anyway, so this is the uh, website. You can click it, go there. Um, and but this is also like a little guide on how to how to sign up to use the library because you need to we need to know who you are so we can mail you the score. Um, uh, so this these links just take you to uh, another Google Doc because that's what we're all about. Nope, that's not a that's just a literal literally how to go sign up to use it. But here's a Here's a Google Talk. How to, if you run into trouble trying to figure out how to do it, this is how you submit a loan request. Just, you know, click here, click there, click there. It's a very useful guide that they made. Uh, how to search by instrument and going to the composer showcase, which is where you can find, uh, I don't know, Rodney Sherman. Yes. <laughs> and see what. S H S H S H. I can do this. I can do this. Looking Sherman. at the alphabet. There he is with his Sherman. beard. Oh, that beautiful picture. Anyway, and so all the information about Rodney and his works that are in the library, click on them, take you to there, and like, ah, oh, I want that one. And often you get uh, no information whatsoever, um, but you can click to possibly read a PDF uh, or like look at the look at just to look at it quickly right if you're like, oh yeah that's perfect that's what I was looking for or rent it or borrow it and uh, yeah well anyway all that information is in here to find and use the vast library that we have of 1 billion billion pieces. Also down here, you can have our Vimeo channel, Facebook page, digital archive. All the links are here. Don't forget to read every single set of posts. <laughs> okay, I didn't do them for myself, you know. Yeah. Have we nerded out enough yet? Because we can, <laughs> we can really get into this stuff and we can really nerd out and geek out entirely on the CMC, but I sort of feel like we might have overdone it already. Okay. Uh, Jordan, let's stop screen sharing and oh, um, okay. ask That's one. Jenna what else we need to do or say. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was, that was very uh, comprehensive. There were things that, uh, yeah, I hadn't realized were, were there and I'm on the archive like at least once a week. Um, I, I can't um, kind of stress enough the, the, um, the importance of the CMC. Um, like I'm not a composer, but um, as uh, a conductor and you know I'm constantly working on programming and so I'm on this the um, the, the CMC website pretty much at least once a week <laughs> to um, to research and look up things and um, find uh, you know a good fit or um, you know preview things and order things so um, I guess could you talk a little bit about um, what uh, what steps composers need to take in order to submit hmm. their works and be uh, um, regarded as what well, it's an associate. You call it, regard them as an associate composer. Right? Yeah. So um, they, it's it's an associate composer program. Uh, we have just under a thousand associate composers as of today, um, and each composer affiliates with a region. Uh, we have five regions across the country, um, and on the on the uh, website um, there's a, a page how to become an associate composer. What we're looking for, essentially, the, 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 the decisions are made by a composer's committee on our national board, uh, but we hold uh, there, but the applications are peer reviewed here uh, in, for BC affiliated composers. The, there's a peer review process here where there's a jury of at least four peers, associate composers um, who meet to review uh, submissions. And so they're looking at, um, what they're looking for are the hallmarks of a professional career. Uh, so someone who has attained their master's degree is an obvious professional accreditation that shows a seriousness of intent 
Um, and generally by that point, someone will have three to five uh, important performances, professional performances of their works. Uh, but we, not everyone has taken a degree in composition and we recognize that and we are trying to become more, um, more inclusive and less restrictive. And so less, you know, getting away from that men's club of 60 years ago in Toronto. So um, we are opening ourselves to new kinds of music. Um, we are, uh, for instance, jazz composers are now uh, um, associate composers and um, we are not insisting on written uh, scores anymore. It used to be this, it was defined by written scores. So the, the criteria have evolved, but mainly what they're looking for is someone who has a professional uh, level of accomplishment and shows an, a, a professional intent uh, in, in composing. And a master's degree is an easy way to demonstrate that uh, and or uh, professional performances and or recordings or videos of, of works. How, does that sum it up pretty well, Jordan? Yep, there's a link in uh, the chat here now, um, which I will also throw on that handy Google Doc. Yeah, that's a good idea, thanks. That's a great question, Chuck. Great, um, um, we just so have a couple minutes left. Uh, do you have any questions for, for our presenters? Thank you so much, uh, Jordan and John. Okay, well, we have a challenge to you. I'd like to know what you're doing. So when you have a performance, let us know. Um, if you if you have a if you if you're if you've finished a work that you've got that you can you know play it uh, like we can actually there's a recording of some kind. We sure I I we we'd like to know what you're doing. We're, we we want to stay in touch. Uh, we we want to encourage you. We've showed all the ways that we're here as a resource for you. So please think of us as a, as a family um, of support and a resource that uh, is here purely for your benefit. Hi, right, Rodney and everybody. Great to see you, Rodney. You're looking terrific. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> <You've got> a, <laughs> I knew the. Long. I could tell the beard was moving on. You're right. Had, yeah. Had to get that in. <laughs> always know when Rodney's coming over because his beard shows up about a minute or two before. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was really um, informative, and uh, yeah, I I uh, would really encourage all of. Um, our mentees to um, to avail yourself as much as possible of the benefits of, of CMC and uh, you know submit your works um, so that uh, it's easy to find you <laughs> like so there are so many composers I wouldn't know about except for the CMC and except for you know um, you know doing some searches and, and going through the archives and spending an afternoon just discovering new works so um, I think that's a, a really um, a really fantastic resource for, for everyone. And um, actually I was on a, a, a conducting master class uh, that was run out of the States. And um, the presenter said, actually, if you guys, it was all American except for me. And they said, have you guys heard of the CMC? Like up in Canada, they're like, it's actually really good. <laughs> There's like free music you can look at. <laughs> I was like, yeah, guys. <laughs> oh, that's great. Anyway, so that was really awesome. And so I, I talked it up and, and shared a bunch of links and things. So um, it's starting to, uh, you know, spread far and far and wide. And so, um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for uh, the great work that you do, Sean and Jordan. It's yeah. much appreciated. Hey. Terrific. Okay, nice to meet you all. Thanks. We look forward to hearing great things from you to come. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, awesome, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you.